Hey guys, today I am going to do a little bit of a different tutorial. I'm going to show you how to paint a watercolor witch's hat since it is the day before Halloween. And Halloween's one of my favorite holidays. I absolutely love it. Love carving pumpkins, love handing out candy. So I'm super excited to do something festive for YouTube this year. So I'm just mixing up a purpley gray color. Um, I'm using Payne's Gray Carbosyl Violet by Daniel Smith and a little bit of Burnt Sienna. And then I'll just mix up some Payne's Gray on its own and then some Carbosyl, Carbosyl Violet on its own as well. And those are the colors that I will use for this project. So I'm going to start off, so I'm going to start off with just a light drawing and I just looked up some pictures of a witch's hat on the internet and I'm making mine a little bit um, distressed and old looking so I'm just doing a triangle with a bit of a point crooked over and then I'm going to just do like an oval connecting from the back coming around the front for the basic hat. And I'm just gonna take my kneaded eraser and clean up that inner line there. And then I think it would be kind of cool just to do like a little spider coming off the hat. I'm just making sure that it has eight legs. And then maybe a bit of the web is through here. And then I think I want to put something on this part, like the rim of the drawing. A lot of times they have like a buckle on there, but I think I want to do something different. So I'm going to have it on this little corner here. And so I think I'm just going to make some simple botanicals. So I'll just do a few lines representing where I'll do leaves and just have some berries there. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the wet and wet wash for the hat. And I'm actually just going to quickly roll over the drawing with my kneaded eraser to lift off the excess graphite. And now I'll do a wet wash with clean water. Sorry about the rustling in the background. That is my cat. She is very active today. And then I'll just kind of tease the water in around the berries there. And then drawing off my brush a little bit, I'm just going to make sure I didn't get anything too puddled up with water. Okay, now I'm just going to drop in my color and I'm using the gray purple and I love this color. Just lightly painting in those between those berries. And I'm 
going to leave a bit of white showing through because um, it does add more dimension to your painting. And I'm just grabbing some of the Payne's Gray and dropping that in and then just a little bit of the Carbazzo Violet as well and I'm just going to see how that spreads out. Um, just kind of just drag my brush through a little bit like that. And now while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit, I'm going to paint in the spider and I'm just mixing some Payne's Gray Burnt Sienna. So the same mix I made for the purpley color but with more Burnt Sienna in it so that it is like a black color. And I'm going to use my smaller brush for this. And because it's such a small area, I'm just going to paint wet on dry right onto the paper. I think I'll just use black for the web so it stands out, but I'll wait till this part dries before I put that part of the web in. Now I'm going to speed this up and dry this with a hairdryer and start on the brim of the hat. All right, so I'm going to go back to my larger brush now and start on the brim of the hat with clean water. I'm just going to go wet on wet again, so wetting the watercolor paper. Alright, so I smoothed that out. I'm going to grab my same mix of the Payne's Grey and Carbazzo Violet and drop the color in just like I did on the top part. And uh, if you're wondering, I'm using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper by the brand Fluid and it's a nice reasonably priced paper. Um, if I'm doing like a really formal or precise botanical painting, I would use Arsh's paper, but for this, the fluid paper will be fine. Now I'm dropping in some Payne's Gray. Again, I want to leave some white area showing through. Now Cabal's Carbazzle Violet. Now I am just blending this a little bit. I probably should not have fiddled with it so much, but um, I did. So I'm just going to clean up the lines a little bit, put my brush through. Just want to make sure that I have it somewhat blended with lighter and darker areas. So I'm going to leave it like that and then let it dry and then do a little bit more painting. All right, now this is dry. I'm just going to add a bit more um, paint to the brim here. And I've just done a little bit of a line of wet 
uh, clean water. This just gives me a little bit more time to blend this. And I'm actually going to grab just some more really concentrated dark paint. To drop in here. Because that would be where some shadow is. And then dragging my brush with clean damp water. This is a graded edge or what I call blending. And that will give you a nice blended soft area. And now I'm going to do the same along the rim. Just a nice line of clean, damp water. And I'm just going to blend that halfway because I think it's drying. And so one of the differences with the less expensive paper like this fluid paper is it is harder to blend um, and get nice sort of blended lines than the more expensive 100% cotton paper. And so I'm getting a bit of a bloom there. So I'm just going to fan my brush out and kind of blend these out a little bit. And it doesn't have to look perfect since we're doing like a distressed looking witch's hat anyway. And I'm just going to add a little bit more to the top. Grabbing a little bit more Payne's Gray to mix in here. Rinsing my brush. Just kind of blending it out a bit there. Okay, so because this is a quicker project, I'm going to leave it at that and just finish up uh, the berries and the spider web. So I'm just going to dry this with the hair dryer really quickly. All right, so I'm just going to quickly paint in the berries. I'm just grabbing a little bit of Perlene Violet that I will mix with Payne's Gray. And just get more of like a maroon violet color. And then I'm just going to paint these in with wet on dry. a little bit of a highlight on some of them and that's that and now again with my tiny brush I will just grab some dark green I'm going to use perlene green and again I'm going to mix some Payne's gray with that and still using my small brush it's going to make some really simple leaves. So we can pretend that this is a botanical witch's hat. And 
Okay, so I'm happy with that for the botanicals. Now I'll use my... I'm actually going to mix the green with that darker mix I made. And more Payne's Gray, more Burnt Sienna. You could use black out of the tube. Um, I do rarely. I just find it more interesting to mix your own black because it has lots of different undertones of colors. Now I am just going to my brush right upright. Let's get a bit more paint off. I'm going to do the spider web with really light pressure and making sure that they're not super uniform straight lines. Okay, so happy with that. And then with my smaller brush, I'm just going to quickly just make this a little bit more defined. Actually, you know, I think I like this like this. I'm going to keep it like it's implying like there's a black ribbon or something going across. And then I'll just use a tiny bit of the darker purple just to make a little bit more definition there. Rinse out my brush and just blend that just a little bit. You could add more detail to this and take it farther, but I am just going to leave it at that. And that is our Halloween witch's hat. Happy Halloween, everyone. I'll see you next Wednesday for another watercolor tutorial.